you got to look at this from from a, a you have to be realistic about this. This is education is is a business more than it is anything else. I mean, it's a dollars and cents business. We get a certain amount of money for each student that comes here, and with that money, we pay for the facilities. We keep the lights on. We bought the camera. Um, we you know have. Uh, we have a physical education department, we have a football field, we have, you know, all the little things that people take take for granted. Student, the student, student union, for example, we have food services, we have um, all kinds of things available to students, that all costs money. So, you know, when the state comes in and says, look, you've got to cut, you know, in our case, you've got to cut seven and a half million dollars from your budget just this year alone. That's a huge amount of money. I mean, the cut is just absolutely devastating. So right now, the teachers in my division, everybody is going at 100% capacity. Um, I don't, and I'm being brutally honest with you here, I don't see anybody slacking. I see everybody working way more than they're actually contracted to work. If the teachers union wanted to come in here and say, you can't ask these people to teach and not be reimbursed, they could hold us our feet to the fire and say you can't let them do that. Well, they aren't doing it right now, but I just don't see any way in the future for the teachers to do any more than they're doing right now. So, in answer to the question is, is are the teachers going to try and accommodate the students? I, I would reverse that and say the students are going to need to start accommodating the teachers um, in order for them to survive and not quit. One of the big issues in education at every level is the the rate teachers drop out of the business. And I can tell you this because, you know, a teacher that comes in just to teach like elementary school, it's a 40 to 50 percent drop rate of people who just quit teaching. And you're going to be looking at that same thing here as the, as the money disappears and uh, the opportunities for professional growth uh, disappear. You're going to see more and more good teachers move on to something else. So it's going to be more of uh, students actually getting together and figuring out ways to, I'll get, here's a good example, so let's say there is a certification class you need. Well, the class you really need to, you need 25, 26 students to make that run. So asking the teacher to say, well, we want to have it, even though you can't get 25, 26 students, can you teach us anyway? Well, no, because that teacher has to do curriculum, they have to do all the grading, they have to develop course materials, they have to, you know, there's, there's huge amounts of work involved, and they're human beings, they have lives. So the students need to figure are going to have to start figuring out ways to get 25 students to enroll in that class if they want to accomplish their educational goals. I, I want to finish by saying I think that's very doable. Um, but I would also say that this is such a, a complete change of everything about the way colleges, universities, and community colleges are funded in the state of California. And it's still so cheap. It's only $17 a unit. It's $85 a unit in Oregon. Uh, Washington, Nevada, all our surrounding states charge way more than $60 a unit. We're still charging 17 So this is just my opinion, but I think the legislature needs to, to raise tuition to $50 a unit, to be honest with you. And if they did that, they'd pretty much solve a vast majority of the problem. The, the colleges would become more sustainable, but then again, on the other hand, a lot of students won't be able to go because they won't be able to afford it. So, you know, do the math. You know, 15 units at 50 bucks a unit. Uh, it's a lot of lot of scratch. Students are used to going for free, so that's what's that's what's going to be needed to survive at least the next three to four years.